Hi guys, Harry here. So we're looking at a video on how to upgrade Microsoft Configuration Manager to 1610. This upgrade can be performed from any of the versions of current branch. So 1511, 1602 and 1606. You cannot upgrade directly to 1610 from 2012 or 2007. If you're on 2007, you should really look at upgrading. If you have the licensing, you need to get into the latest version to make your life so much better. If you're on 2012, you need to get yourself to a baseline, so maybe 1511 or 1606, and then you can upgrade yourself to 1610. 1610 brings more really exciting features into the Configuration Manager product. This isn't going to be a full list, but a few of my favorites. Software updates compliance dashboards. Welcome change to give us an overview of your device compliance status. We also have a cloud management gateway, which gives a simpler way of getting up and running to manage the clients on the internet. Office 365 client management dashboarding has been added to see Office 365 clients or versions, or maybe the channels. There's also other data, but that's just a few things that we can now see. We also have a nice new switch to help us move from BIOS to UFI, which if you're migrating from Windows 7 to Windows 10, this switch will help you streamline your task sequence to make sure you can start utilizing some of the new security features such as Credential Guard. For more information, follow the link on the screen to the relevant TechNet article so you can see what's new in 1610. I'll also look to upload a video to show off some of the new features in this release. Before we dive straight in, let's just talk about a couple of things, a few things to note. Uh, there's now a new Microsoft pre-upgrade checklist to read through, and this will just give you what you should do before upgrading. Of course, before upgrading to any new version of Microsoft Configuration Manager, you need to make sure you back up your site in case anything goes wrong. I want to make sure that you can go back to a healthy state. So make sure and back up your site. In this video, I'm just going to be upgrading from a single primary site running 1606 in online mode. So if you're in offline mode, this video is not going to have all the steps you need to get you up to 1610. However, if you're on online mode, stick around and this will give you all the information you need to get updated. The installation is a top down approach. If you have a hierarchy, then make sure that you actually run the upgrade from the central administration site first. This then causes your child primaries to automatically upgrade, but you'll still have to go in and manually upgrade your secondary site. So in the video here, we're just going to look at what I have in my environment, which is one primary site. So we're going to do the primary site first. I don't have any secondary, so we won't worry about that. And then we move on to the configuration manager consoles and then the client agent. Enough of the theory done. Let's jump inside the Configuration Manager console. If you're not familiar by now, upgrading Configuration Manager is not like the past when we manually went through a fair amount of steps to upgrade. This is all driven inside the Configuration Manager console itself. You'll find this under Administration, Cloud Servicing, and then Updates and Servicing. As of making this video, Configuration Manager 1610 is still being rolled out globally. So in the results pane, I'm unable to see the new update. There are a few options for me. As I'm running in online mode, Configuration Manager just keeps checking every 24 hours. So I could wait and see if in the next few days, after a few more checks, I have the 1610 in my environment. However, I'm impatient and I want to get my hands on the new features. To get ahead of the pack, we need to go download a PowerShell script from the Configuration Manager team. This is published on the TechNet Gallery 
and the link should be on the screen. And also, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put the link in the description. If you find out though, however, that this link doesn't work anymore, that's because the upgrade to 1610 is fully rolled out across the globe. So you just want to go back into updates and servicing and then refresh your updates to go see if it's available. I've downloaded the enablefastring.exe and placed it in a directory called enablefastring and then ran the setup to extract the enablefastring1610.ps1. We're going to need to open up an elevated PowerShell window and then navigate to the directory enable fast ring. From here, we actually need to now run the enable fast ring update.ps1. So I'm going to do enable fast ring update ring 1610.ps1 and then we have a parameter of site server. So here, you just want to put in the name of the either central administration site or the primary site. So in my case, pon config manager 01. And then press enter. And then we'll see it go and do its magic before we're ready to go search again to see if we've got the 1610 upgrade. Let's now jump back into the configuration manager console. And from updates and servicing, let's check for a new update. Once we check for updates, it's then going to say we can monitor this from the DMP downloader log. From the DMP downloader.log, you can follow along with the download and extraction of the files needed for the upgrade. The first thing you'll notice is that bits will actually start to download the CAV files for 1610. Once they're downloaded, they're going to start extracting to an easy payload folder, which is located in your configuration manager installation directory. After the files from this cab have been exported into the Easy Payload folder, we'll then move through to seeing if we need to download any Redis files. Once this has all been completed, it will then report back to Configuration Manager to say that the package is available. We can see this from the console. If we just go ahead and refresh it, it will switch that over from downloading to available, which will then mean that we can move on with the install. If you want to see a more graphical view of what happened in these steps, this can be done from monitoring, updates and servicing status. This node now shows Configuration Manager 1610 is available. If we go to show status, we can of course then see a little more information of what happened within the downloading stage. With the install available in the console, there is a choice to be had. Either go straight to installing the update pack or running the prerequisite check. I generally don't go straight in for the install and I'm a fan of running the prerequisite check first. And after all, it's good to know that everything is healthy before installing. To run the prerequisite check, you can either select this from the ribbon or right click and run the prerequisite check. Similar to the download stage, this can be monitored from either the monitoring node or from a log called config manager prereq.log, stored on the root of your OS directory, for example, C. After this is completed, the state will change to prerequisite check pass. Then from the monitoring node and the 1610 status, the prerequisite check will have all green ticks. Of course, if yours does not, now is a good time to troubleshoot the errors. After you've troubleshooted your errors, you can of course then go run the prerequisites checks again. From the log config MGR prerequisites, if all goes well, you'll see prerequisite checking is complete. This can also be confirmed from the config manager setup log as it will display prerequisite check is passed. It's now time to get this install going. From the updates and servicing node, I'm going to right click the 1610 upgrade and choose install update pack, which will bring up the installation wizard. 
From the General tab, the only option is to say if Config Manager should ignore warnings and update regardless. I'm not going to enable this and move on. Now we get the choice whether or not to actually enable some of the additional features. In my environment, I want to play with all the features I can get my hands on, so I'm just going to enable this, and then we're going to go to the client option. From here, you get a couple of options. Do you want to actually just upgrade your client package without validation? So just write over your existing configuration manager client package, or do you want to validate the client against a pre-production collection? This collection will get the install. And then if you believe that this is fit for the rest of the environment, you can go back into the config manager environment and ask it to overwrite the existing package. I'm personally just gonna go with upgrade without validation. However, in your environment, you may prefer to validate the client first. This is really all there is to the wizard. We're just gonna, of course, accept the licensing agreement and then next my way through to completion. With the installation kicked off, I'm sure by now you can guess what the options are to follow along. We can either do this from inside the console's monitoring node, or we can look at logs. The best log to look at if you do want to follow along is the cmupdate.log found under the configuration manager installation location, and then logs. Once the installation is complete, within the cmupdate.log, you'll see that the configuration manager update status is being reported back and the post installation monitoring threads have been stopped. It'll also show us that actually no more update packages are pending processing. So we finished processing our update. This will then be proved because in the console, we'll notice that the status has changed to installed. Now that the configuration manager site is updated, let's move on to looking at getting the consoles updated so that your administrator users can benefit from these new features. As of configuration manager 16.2, this has been made an automatic install. The config manager team have done a great job of doing this so that we don't have to deploy it out to all of our administrative users. If an old version of the console is opened, or if a console is already opened and navigated to a different node, it's gonna prompt that user to actually install the new configuration manager console. Of course, the recommendation will be to update immediately and not delay this procedure. After the console updates and completes, we can then actually go into the configuration manager console and just verify that the console and the site information is correct. The last thing I'm gonna show in my primary site environment is making sure the clients are gonna to upgrade to the latest version. With the upgrade, there'll be two new packages created and automatically distributed to your distribution points. These can be used for upgrade tasks or initial installs, for example, in a task sequence. However, I want to utilize one of the features in Configuration Manager to automatically upgrade my clients. If you haven't looked at this yet, I highly recommend looking at it. To turn it on, we just gotta to navigate to Administration, Sites, and then Hierarchy Settings, and then choose the Client Upgrade tab. From here, we can actually configure this upgrade. So we can say, actually, let's upgrade all of our clients in our hierarchy to the production client. With this ticked, we can then choose, do we actually want our servers to upgrade? So that's a yes or a no there. And then automatically update our clients within a certain amount of days. So I've chosen 14. You can choose what you think is a viable amount of time to upgrade your clients within your environment. One of the other awesome features in 1610 is being able to exclude specified clients from upgrade. So you can just go ahead and choose a collection of members that you don't want to get the new client. And this will mean that they won't get the upgrade via any of our automatic methods, such as automatic upgrades or software update based upgrade. And then once you've actually gone ahead and enabled this, your clients are just gonna go out there 
and if they're found with an old version, they're going to be upgraded to the production client. And there we have it. Your clients will start upgrading to the latest version. Your configuration manager hierarchy is, of course, to the latest version, which is as of this video, 1610. All that's left to do is for you to go and actually start trying out the cool new features that configuration manager has to offer. If you have any questions, please give me a shout. And that's it, and I'll see you in the next video.